I came back from Worlds. My GM told me, you're a very important piece to our roster going forward. There's no way we're going to consider trading you. You're like, you're a dig man or whatever. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, it's fine with me. I go home. I expect to hear, like, hear news of what players they're going for, what, what roster they want to build. I don't really, I feel like I'm not really involved. And then, like, out of the blue one day, my, the, the new GM called me or asked me if I wanted to, to hop on a call. Called me, told me, are you okay being traded to Cloud9? I was pretty shocked at first because, well, all the times they told me that I wouldn't get traded. But, like, of course, I, I, wanna, I wanted to play for Cloud9. So the guy, he sent me, or he told me, okay, cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck at Cloud9. It was a pleasure working with you, whatever. So I was like, okay. Um, get someone on Cloud9, not cool. He, he gave me Jack's contacts. I started talking with him, but then after a few days, uh, apparently the, the deal fell through, so I wasn't in Cloud9 anymore. Dig was going to trade Vulcan to C9. I heard from multiple people that it was over a mil for Vulcan. Well, regardless, apparently the Vulcan deal fell through. And the interesting oh, well. thing is it fell through on the Dig side. The deal with Dignitas definitely had like moments when we thought it was done but you know when you're not able to actually pen a deal and it's all verbal you have to be prepared for things to go sideways on it and it did um big CEO, ceo called me oh you're still a dig man um we, we won't trade it we won't be trading you it's very unlikely that you change team and at that time i had like i just got a package of puma puma stuff i got a clown nine jersey at home. Um, I just I, I felt like I was in clown nine, and then I got untraded. It didn't look like the deal, you know, would go through. Um, but I never gave up hope. There was no option for in my mind for Dignitas to say no. I was going to do whatever it took to make sure it happened. It gave me a lot of confidence that it was going to happen. Yeah, I was traded, untraded. Retraded, be untraded, retraded. So it was, uh, it, it was stressful to just have no idea what was going on. I mean, I didn't really think about the business side of things. I guess where a player can be traded for seven figures. Um, yeah, I didn't really know, or I mean think that through, I guess. I think my first offer was probably like three to 500,000. And it just kept growing and growing and growing. I had to get to the point where Dick Matossa said, this, this is nuts, I have to actually take this. You don't get this type of offer um, very often. Yeah, I think the fact that I have the highest buyout in the history of esports for the West puts more pressure on me because like every, every time I'll make a mistake, People will be like 1.5 million XD, or you know they'll, they'll associate a price tag to to me, or you know I have to live up to a certain level of play, or else Klein West said I'll have that, all of that money. So definitely more pressure, but I'm confident in my play, so I don't think it will really affect me in my performance. Hey guys, I'm Vulcan or Phil Platform, and I play support at Klein. What it do? What it does? Where you was, but it ain't what it is. Face in the mud, I really be hating the mud. Said I can't pick it up, but I did. Y'all know goon put too much bass in the sub. Cup full of blood, and I gave it a chug. Wait till your neighbors get all snug, then play this real loud where you live. This that for the kids. Sauce so up strength, can't say what it is. Your kids came, ain't say what he did. Make sure you move, put a chain on the gear. Yeah, I've been on top of the tower. Got the power with the man. Gun cock in his pocket, shower. Bitch down with the squeeze, that's rock the power. I done hang with the guys, and we talk for hours. Yo. Three words to describe Vulcan. Uh, funny. Actually, funny is the most important one. Calm. Big voice, I think, in game. And... Skilled. Stupid. Sometimes. I'm from Sherbrooke, Quebec, Canada. Um, my upbringing, I guess, was pretty ordinary. I played a lot of soccer growing up. 
from like five years old to when I was 18 and I moved away from Canada. I played a lot of soccer. I would play whatever video game my brother was playing. Started with like Nintendo games, Super, uh, Mario 64, Pokemon, and then League was like my first PC game. I started at 11. Yeah, I guess my upbringing was pretty normal. Me and my brother would compete a lot, like who could get higher ELO or higher rank. And he, he kind of pushed me or pushed us to, to attend tournaments, to you know try and build teams. Um, he really wanted to compete, so it's probably thanks to him that I started it, started doing it, and you know found that I, that I love doing it. So he really introduced me to competitive league. I met uh, Vulcan or Phil like five or six years ago. It was a really long time ago. He, he lives from like pretty close place where I live. Like we speak the same language. So I met him like in so cute randomly. His name was like super cringe. His name was like Philip Laflamme. His actual name is like is, is so cute. That's really cringe. I was kind of looking up to Diamond's group of friends, I guess. Like the high, high low people who were like in, the, uh, in and out of the Chandra scene. Some, some of them were playing LCS qualifiers. And I, I kind of looked up to those guys and there was one tournament where we, we played versus them. We had the, the best players in every position. They were just like, we really just like shit on everyone, make it bland. So like people started getting complacent. They were kind of trolling like their life and they're, they're not playing league anymore. And he, he came over with a new team and they smacked, they smacked us really hard. And we beat them somehow like two to one in the finals of a kind of big event, I guess, for, for Quebec. Um, and after that, I kind of got introduced to them, I guess, and I learned a lot from from Cake, who is probably like the best AD carry Quebec ever produced, I guess. Uh, I, I do it a lot with him. Uh, I climbed a lot of Soki with him. When I qualified to scouting rounds, I, I used to do a lot, so he kind of boosted me a little bit and taught me a lot of like landing stuff, matchups, stuff like that. So I guess the, the group of friends kind of helped me develop faster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh my god, someone's gonna watch this and be like, oh my god, you only put like, the tiniest amount of cheese on that. I felt the same way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, man, I don't like it. I was really excited to be able to pick for Cloud9 because, I mean, all over the years, it's one of the best, if not the best team. Like, I mean, internationally, it's been the best team, but obviously, Clown hasn't been able to win NA, so I mean they're not as good as the team they could recently, but I was still really, really hyped to be a part of Clown 9, you know, the the fan base that Clown 9 has, the performance, everything. So I was really hyped to to play for Clown 9. I think this week, since we're facing Dignitas Class and FlyQuest, I feel like we have to play really clean because these teams in late game are pretty good. And I feel like our last game on stage was not as clean as before. I would be pretty confident, but our scrims have been going pretty badly today and yesterday. Yeah, we're struggling a little bit. I think it's good that we're having some issues at this point of the season. You know, it's still pretty early. We still haven't lost a single game, so. Um, I'm not really sure what to think of FlyQuest. I think they, they could be good. They could be pretty bad. They'll probably just end up being somewhere in the middle. One, two, three, see you You can see FlyQuest was actually matching in any way rather than getting pressure elsewhere, so this could be a disaster for FlyQuest. Oh, nicely done by Blabber there, using the body slam and the flash, followed up immediately by the ult. It puts Viper in a spot where he's not getting out. They want to give it away to Zven, and there you go, one shot in the back. First blow. Perfect execution of post Rift Herald by Blabber's down to half HP. The Vulcan center has found its way out of Vulcan, and there comes the Cataclysm. Santorum's going to get two stopwatches, but Zven brings in the firepower. Ignar's gonna be roasted alive, and the stasis will barely keep him in there. The equalizer's brought down, and that is fried catfish, baby. Cloud9 is going to town in this team fight. Wild Turtle, he even
one has to flash away, but it is too damn little, too damn late. Well, congratulations on C9 for moving to 5-0 and in the LCS. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> What motivates me is just winning or when I when I fell down I, I kind of just picture me playing in a stadium and you know just like popping off and, and winning and that's kind of how I get back to being motivated I guess or if I don't feel like playing solo queue I'll just like imagine myself being there and, and, and playing on stage that's how I keep practicing I guess. Um, today's game felt pretty easy. Uh, I think our comp is broken. Yeah, we had Exodia and then their comp couldn't really fight back. And it, it felt like they didn't really try to do too much either. So we just kind of cruised and got every dragon. I think we were kind of slow in mid game and taking some towers, but uh, with our comp, I think we were never going to lose. So I think it's fine. Um, if last weekend was a five out of 10, this was a six, maybe seven. Um, it was better, but I, I thought, you know, just from the draft, we had like a much easier time winning the game. Um, and what we practice in scrims, I think it's just like polishing our play style. Um, we have like, we still have like a few mistakes or things we want to be on the same page for. So just like polishing stuff. Okay, Nisky, he's dead. How much is it? I think, I think like eight today, eight thirty. Wow. Oh, there's so much salt. Oh, great, there you go. is kind of the target of everyone's jokes right now, so. Our relationship is him getting attacked by everyone and I kind of jump in sometimes. Whenever I make a joke or someone else makes a joke, he's like kind of trying to get into the joke like himself, you know, or makes a more stupid joke of it, you know. He's a pretty funny guy, so he takes it well. I mean, we've been getting along really well and it feels like we've been friends for like more than what's been. It's been like two or three months. I feel like it's been one or two years, I guess, at least for me. I hope it's the same for him as well. So. Yeah, I, I enjoy playing with Niski so far and just like hanging out with him. I think he's growing to be the leader of the team, so you know, I respect that a lot and he's a very good player, so I, I respect Niski a lot. Right now, we haven't been playing for a long time, so it's hard to say, you know, they're my closest friends, but I'm sure we'll get to that point at some time. I think it's pretty important that you're able to be close just because it's easier to solve problems in the game, I feel like, if you know, you're on the same page or if you're, if you're not scared of you know, like saying hard stuff to someone because, you know, when you're closer, it's easier to do that, I feel like. So I'd say it's important that you're close to your teammates, yeah. Wait, just the reboot computer, no? I don't fucking know. No! Oh my god. What? Wait, doesn't she look like. Yeah, uh... yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was thinking you wanted to. <laughs> like who? Yeah, the therapist, Mr. Robert. The therapist from Mr. Robert. Yeah, yeah it's a Trisha. Yeah, Trisha. Is it, is it with Trixia or Trisha? I think. Trisha. Yeah. It cannot be Trixia. That's not a real name. What it is? Trixia. Yeah. I got that. Trixia is a name. Yeah, maybe in the. Dude, it's actually her. I swear to God. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's not. It's, it's her plus pretty pretty pounds. Oh my God, you just yourself. Oh my God, so can you stop yelling, by the way? What's, what's so exciting about GGSTS on this team? Got my, there's my two Turkish brothers in there. I thought they were That's yeah. pretty cool. You like? So who are you cheering for? Both. Let's keep going. Actually, high. mostly GG. <laughs> yeah, for me, Dingatos is the most important team to beat in LCS. For obvious reasons. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to lose to my replacement, or I, I don't want to lose to Huni, even though you know I like playing with him. I don't, I don't want to lose to my old teammate or, or team. I, f I feel like they lack some firepower compared to other teams. Um, their one is doing okay right now, but I feel like they're going to be a problem in the future, uh, specifically versus us. I think me and Sven are going to be better than Johnson and Afromu. So I'm thinking of a bot diff, and it's not like I mean it's not like the, the, our solo laners or jungler are worse than they are. So I think we're Better across, we're better across the board, so um, if everything goes right, I think we win 100%. All right. So today, I want you guys to remember what you guys are practice, like the goals. No. I don't say it. <laughs> I don't say Not it. Play like the warm-up games. <laughs>
<laughs> I was perfect. <laughs> nice. So, what, what we have to remember is, first one, play aggressive as possible when you limit. That's fine. You set up the limits, right? And set up the place, and take the zone, and then waiting for enemies, come to your zone, then attack them, you know? That's what we practice, right? And then, when solos move, you don't die. Right? You don't die. When solos timings, you gotta be safe. Then, you know, that kind of things are we practice, and I, I hope you guys remember that. And also, positioning around the objective, too. You're really good at that, that these days, so. Smoke much. Uh, one, two, three, see you guys! Auto attack in the queue, but Gangplank can really make that explode on the next level here. You can see the junglers might find because the blabber remaining perfectly still, so Grig can't see him with the trimmer sense. I actually love. Oh, Bubble does land. Blabber's oh, gonna get him. There we go. They're looking to go in. Grig taken out first. Blood. Grig thinking about it. Gangplank ulti already summoned up. Cloud9 playing this slowly. Very nice shot by one to two. They got him. And Froggen gets the first kill of the split on to spin. But at what cost? Dignitas is annihilated by Cloud9. I mean, they, they all committed really hard to kill Sven. Froggen flash forward like in the flank position. Yeah, he was really triggered. He was, he was kind of angry. He all chatted right after. Worth question mark because I think we like. 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, we, I like think four, we aced one. them, or 4-1, four, four, yeah. Yeah, got the dragon. And then Froggen said, get carried, or you're getting carried or something, I don't know. And as that was triggered. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's legitimately just no way. Vulcan's gonna buy some time for these guys. He's got the stone plate, keeping him tanky. They're on the front line. Blabber goes over the wall, and he is unstoppable. Puni now gonna be soaking all the damage from Niski off the side of this fight. Soaking, uh, well, it's a waterfall. You ain't gonna soak that up. That's so much damage from Cloud9, and they're right back on the barrel. Yep. Licorice is behind them. The tower still standing, but it doesn't matter. Vulcan's going in. Johnson's under pressure. Blabber looking to grab the damage into the execution. He is dominating. Hoonie's in the back line, and the dragon is just breathing fire on all of Dignitas. It's a double for Niski, and it's an absolute slaughter for Cloud9. DPM. Oh, I was DPM. in so hard. That was unbelievable. Correct. I'm armless. Man. I saw this too, it's big. <laughs> yeah, I forgot. I kind of trolled the early landing a little bit, so I got a bit hard to be able to push them in, but like they didn't really use their priority to get anything, so I mean, we got every dragon uh, swap for Rift. I think Blabber just stole it, we killed them. So uh, just the usual Cloud9 game plan going on, yeah. I mean, it feels good to beat Uni. It's like the only player on that team that that is from the last year's roster. But, you know, just beating beating the org feels good. You know, just, if, if we were to lose, then I'd be like, ah, oh, shit, why did I go to Cloud9? <laughs> but yeah, it definitely feels a lot better. <laughs> when you, th you think about this player, I mean, think about his name. Philip Flame. like, what the fuck? It's so cool. 1.75 million, worth. <laughs> <laughs>